Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you some red currants. It's finally and officially summer right now, so I think it's a perfect time to uh, paint something else than flower. Uh, and just uh, uh, red berries are for me uh, really uh, important for summer. Uh, and right now I'm growing also a strawberry in uh, in my garden or my small garden on the balcony uh, so uh, maybe you will be uh, seeing uh, some, some more uh, berries painting uh, in the near future so for uh, today's uh, red current uh, i'm starting by painting some reds on my paper i'm using windsor red uh, today uh, just because it's a perfect uh, neutral red not too uh, warm not too um, cool uh, so it's a perfectly uh, red balance red for me uh, and i love this color for red currents and to uh, make this color pop a little bit more uh, i surround it with a little bit of nickel azo yellow and oc red gold uh, to make it pop a little bit more and of course i'm using also the lots of greens to make the greenery around the red currents and you can see the flow of nickel as a yellow. It's a, a really particular color because uh, it moves a lot on, uh, on its own. And when you put uh, a little bit of uh, nickel as a yellow on a wet area, it will diffuse a very long way in the wet area. And it's a, a very interesting effect and quite mesmerizing to look at. As usual, I'm starting with a dry paper, but as I'm working on it, uh, it becomes wetter and wetter. And right now everything is wet and everything is uh, bleeding and everything is really, really soft. And that's exactly what I want uh, in a background, uh, just because uh, I do not want to have details too early uh, in my paintings. As a last uh, details in some sort in this uh, first layer, I'm adding a little bit of acrylic ink. Here it's uh, the sepia color I've used at first and now I'm adding a little bit of indigo. And with uh, a granulating medium, I will make them granulate a lot and they will add uh, quite a lot of texture and interest in this uh, bottom area of my painting. And you can see that uh, when I apply the um, granulating medium at first, you cannot see anything. But when you make the paper move and the color move on the paper, you see all the um, effect of uh, the granulating medium appears. So it's really important to move your paper when you are using this technique. And now that I'm happy with this uh, first layer, I will let everything uh, dry totally uh, before adding uh, another layer to, to this uh, painting. And for the second layer, you can see that my colors are uh, dry a little bit lighter uh, than uh, it was applied at first, but that's totally okay. And uh, for my, my uh, second layer, I will focus my work on uh, detailing the red currents. And for detailing them, I'm using uh, the negative painting techniques uh, where I uh, paint around the red current and not the red current itself. And it's uh, quite an important technique in watercolor uh, just because in this way you can paint a darker color uh, around a lighter uh, subject. So it's uh, quite a, uh, an important technique to, to know and to use. As my background in the bottom uh, part of uh, my painting is quite warm with earthy tone to it, I'm just using uh, Amazonite Genuine and um, Ultramarine Blue uh, for, uh, for my color here. And as there is a lot of yellow underneath and all the colors are transparent, uh, the, this mix makes a really beautiful green and very, uh, a very natural green. And as uh, Amazonite Genuine and Ultramarine Blue are also uh, granulating colors, it adds a little bit more details in this uh, background and uh, a lot more texture to, to it. And this is really uh, interesting. 
For this painting, I do not want to have too much details in the foliage and all the greenery uh, surrounding my uh, red currants. I just want them to be uh, really uh, clear and uh, really attractive to the eye of the spectator. Uh, and I do not want all the greenery to, to be distracting uh, the, the eye of my spectator. And for that, I will not add too much details in the greenery. I just want uh, a, an idea of uh, the foliage, but very blurry uh, and with uh, really zero details in it. I have had some trouble uh, during the process of painting uh, this uh, red currants, uh, just because it's becoming uh, really, really hot here in Barcelona. And uh, the day I was painting uh, this, it was quite humid too. Uh, so my paper was not behaving uh, the way it used to. So I have to uh, rethink a little bit my way of painting during summer and uh, adapt uh, with what's going on on my paper. It was quite weird uh, to see my paper dry so fast uh, on the surface. Uh, my color was not uh, bleeding into each other easily uh, as I'm used to, uh, but the, the paper was quite humid at heart. So uh, the color was feathering in some sort in the paper, but not uh, bleeding uh, really well uh, and that's why that was quite destabilizing for me. But now that I know uh, what's happening on my paper, I can act differently and uh, adapt uh, my way of painting in order to correct all these uh, little things. Uh, maybe I can use more uh, water uh, on my brush and uh, on my paper uh, so that it stay wet a little bit more. Or I can start with a wet paper at first, uh, like uh, taking uh, it under the sink and wet it uh, completely uh, and I also can use a, a water bottle uh, to spray the surface of my paper a little bit more so that the area I want to stay wet will stay wet a little bit uh, longer. In this painting maybe the my shapes are a little bit uh, stronger, uh, it's a little bit more energetic and not uh, as uh, delicate that I'm used to and it may be uh, a lot because of uh, the, the dryness of my paper. But I can't wait uh, to paint this uh, subject again uh, and uh, try all the little tips I've just said about uh, the wetness of my paper and maybe I'm, I will be able to make something a little bit more delicate uh, than this painting. But anyway, I'm quite happy with uh, the direction this painting is uh, taking and I will let this uh, layer dry uh, before adding some uh, little details. But let's talk about supplies. For the brushes, I've used an Escoda Ultimo number no. 18 and an Escoda Ultimo number no. 8 Rigger and a black velvet silver brush uh, one fourth inch. For the colors, I'm using Ultramarine Blue Amazonite Genuine, Nickel as a Yellow, Aussi Red Gold, Windsor Red, Kenacridon Burn Scarlet, Lavender, and Wisteria. But uh, I'm also using uh, some acrylic ink uh, in the color sepia and indigo. And at the end, I will use a little bit of opaque white from Schmenger. And of course, uh, my medium of granulation is uh, from Windsor and Newton. And my paper today is from Archies in Hot Pressed. So for the last uh, details, uh, I will add some shadow uh, in uh, the red currents so that you can see the shape a little bit more and uh, so that they have a little bit more volume also. Uh, and for that, I'm using a mix of uh, ultramarine blue and uh, Windsor red. Uh, 
uh, just because uh, I was thinking of using uh, um, quinacridone burnt scarlet uh, and I mentioned it uh, in uh, the supplies I've used just because I've tried to use it but it's a little bit too earthy tone for uh, the shadow of the red current and I think uh, that the mix of uh, ultramarine blue and Windsor red is working really uh, better uh, in, uh, in this uh, shadow uh, making. And also to add some uh, volume and texture to uh, the red current, uh, I have to add shadow of course, but also uh, a light uh, color uh, so that uh, you can see uh, maybe the sun reflecting on uh, the red current because they are uh, foods that are really uh, brilliant. So I try to use uh, lavender and wisteria for that uh, because I think that the, this hint of light is quite uh, full of colors in the shadow but it was not working uh, as, as I wanted just because these two colors are light but not light enough uh, to, to make uh, the perfect uh, light effect. So I've used also uh, opaque white from Schmincke that it's uh, quite a uh, similar uh, color to uh, white gouache uh, and it's working uh, really uh, much better for, for this particular effect. I'm really happy with this painting. It was the first time I was trying to uh, paint red current and, and I like that uh, a lot, but I also can't wait to try it again. I have plenty of ideas to improve this painting. And this video is now ending. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it. Please check the blog post for more information about it and tell me what you think in the comments. See you soon.